VGA Video Graphics Array, introduced in 1987 by IBM. It uses a 15-pin D-sub connector, usually with two thumb screws. The signal is analog RGB with separate H and V-sync, and it carries no audio. Because it's analog, image sharpness drops as resolution or cable length increases. High-res text can look soft compared to digital links. Typical use spans legacy PCS and older projectors and monitors. It was originally tied to 640 by 480, but you'll see it used up through 800 by 600, 1024 by 768, 1280 by 1024, 1920 by 1080, and even 2048 by 1536 on short quality cables. Whether 1080pi looks fine or fuzzy varies by hardware and viewer because a digital to analog conversion is involved on flat panel displays. Modern graphics cards rarely output analog video. If your source only has digital outputs like DVI-D, HDMI, or DisplayPort, a simple passive dongle won't create a VGA signal. You need an active digital-to-analog converter box. DVI, Digital Visual Interface, introduced in 1999 by the Digital Display Working Group. It carries uncompressed digital video, TMDS signaling, same video format as HDMI, and can also carry analog on some versions. It does not carry audio. The three connector families are DVI-D, digital only, DVI-I, integrated, digital plus analog, and DVI-A, analog only. Single link versus dual link refers to how many TMDS links are present. Dual link adds six digital pins to double bandwidth. Maximum practical resolutions. Single link DVI tops out around 1920 by 1200 at 60 Hz. Dual link DVI reaches 2560 by 1600 at 60 Hz. Dual link does not reach 4K because HDMI video is electrically compatible with DVI's TMDS, low-cost passive DVI, and HDMI adapters work for video at DVI class resolutions, but audio won't pass over DVI. Adapter rules that matter. If your GPU port is DVI-I, a cheap passive DVI to VGA plug can output analog VGA. If your GPU port is DVI-D, digital only, passive VGA adapters will not work. You need an active DVI to VGA converter that performs digital to analog conversion. HDMI, high definition multimedia interface, carries digital video and audio on one cable. It also supports CEC device to device control, HDCP copy protection, and an optional ethernet over HDMI channel. Common connectors you'll see are type A, full size, type C, mini, and type D, micro. A rarely used type B dual link was defined early on, but never shipped in consumer gear. Type E is the rugged automotive version. From HDMI 1.4, TVs and GPUs gained 4K at 30 Hz and that optional Ethernet channel. HDMI 2.0 raised 4K to 60 Hz. HDMI 2.1 moved beyond the old TMDS, signaling to fixed rate link, FRL, up to 48 gigabits per second, enabling 4K at 120 Hz and 8K at 60 Hz, plus gaming features like variable refresh rate, VRR, Auto Low Latency Mode, ALLM, and Enhanced ARC for Lossless Audio to a Soundbar, or AVR. Not every device implements every 2.1 feature. Cable and device support must match. Cable classes matter. Ultra high speed. HDMI cables certify for the full 48 gigabits per second feature set. Introduced with HDMI 2.1. If your setup needs 4K 120, 8K 60, VRR, or eARC, use certified ultra high speed cables end to end. New in 2025, HDMI 2.2. The HDMI forum released version 2.2 with bandwidth up to 96 gigabits per second and a new Ultra 96 cable category. HDMI 2.2 also adds Latency Indication Protocol, LIP, to improve A and V sync in complex chains, TV, soundbar, receiver, and sources. Early coverage and the forum's materials say 2.2 is backward compatible, but adoption will lag until 2.2 capable chips, devices, and Ultra 96 cables ship in volume. DisplayPort, packet-based PC display link introduced in 2006. It carries digital video plus audio, supports adaptive sync for variable refresh, free sync and G-Sync, 
compatible, and MST, multi-stream transport, for daisy-chaining multiple monitors from one port. A full-size DP plug normally has a latch. Mini Display Port is the small variant used on older laptops and early Thunderbolt. Link speeds and versions. Older DP ran at HBR, HBR2, and HBR3 up to 8.1 gigabits per second per lane on DP 1.4. DisplayPort 2.1 moves to UHBR rates, UHBR 10, 13.5, and 20, four lanes up to 80 gigabits per second total. With DSC, display stream compression, visually lossless, vendors target combos like 4K at 240 hertz, 8K at high refresh, and marketing claims up to 16K at 60 hertz on qualified hardware. Real support depends on the GPU, monitor, and cable. Cables matter. VESA certifies DP40 and DP80 cables for the 40 and 80 gigabits per second link rates. In 2025, VESA announced DisplayPort 2.1B with DP80LL, low loss, active cables, up to three times longer at UHBR20, demoed around three meters, versus approximately one meter passive at the top speed. Look for the official DP logo and the DP80 and DP80LL labeling to avoid bandwidth bottlenecks. Adapters, many PC graphics cards expose DP++ dual mode, which can output HDMI and DVI signaling through a passive dongle. If the port is display port only, no DP++. Converting to HDMI and DV, I needs an active adapter that changes the protocol. This is why some cheap DP and HDMI plugs work on one machine and not on another. Mini DisplayPort and Thunderbolt 1 and 2. The Mini DisplayPort connector is a small version of DisplayPort used on many older laptops and monitors. Thunderbolt 1 and 2 use this same Mini DisplayPort shaped jack but add a high speed data link. They tunnel DisplayPort video through the Thunderbolt connection. Thunderbolt 1 runs two 10 gigabit channels. Thunderbolt 2 aggregates them to 20 gigabits per second and upgrades the display path from DisplayPort 1.1A TB1 to DisplayPort 1.2 TB2. In practice, TB2 can drive a single 4K screen or dual lower resolution screens through docks and adapters, and you can daisy chain several devices with the display, usually at the end if it doesn't support chaining. Look for the Thunderbolt Lightning Bolt logo versus the plain mini DisplayPort icon to know what you have. USB-C DisplayPort, Alt Mode, and USB 4. A USB-C video port is not a new video standard. In most PCs and tablets, it carries DisplayPort, either as DisplayPort Alt Mode, native DP over the USB-C pins, or tunneled DisplayPort inside USB 4. That's why some USB-C and HDMI dongles must be active adapters. They convert DisplayPort to HDMI because HDMI signaling isn't present on the port. Alt Mode 2.0 maps DisplayPort 2.0 and 2.1 onto USB-C. With all four high-speed lanes used for video, it carries up to 80 gigabits per second of DisplayPort. If you also need fast USB data on the same cable, it runs up to 40 gigabits per second for video alongside USB. This is how single cable docks can drive high-resolution displays while still moving data. USB 4, V1, and V2 focuses on tunneling protocols like DisplayPort and PCI Express. The USB 4 host requirement includes support for DisplayPort Alt Mode on its downstream ports, ensuring broad monitor compatibility. USB 4 version 2.0 raises link capability to 80 gigabits per second and for display heavy use, an asymmetric 120 gigabits per second one way and 40 gigabits per second the other way mode. Using a new signaling scheme, use proper USB-C, full featured or active 80 gigabits per second cables to reach these rates. Practical note for creators and gamers, 4K high hards or 8K claims over USB-C depend on three things at once, your GPU's USB-C and DP capabilities, the monitor's DP and USB 4 support, and the cable's rating. Mismatches fall back to lower speeds or require a powered active adapter. Thunderbolt 5 USB-C 
Intel's newest Thunderbolt raises the pipe to 80 gigabits per second bidirectional with a one-way bandwidth boost up to 120 gigabits per second when your setup needs more display headroom. That extra transmit bandwidth is specifically for video. It dynamically rebalances the link so high refresh external displays don't choke other traffic. Intel's materials cite support for dual 8K monitors or very high hearts 4K. Thunderbolt 5 continues to use USB USB-C power delivery, and with USB PD 3.1 extended power range, certified TB5 cables can carry up to 240 watts, but this requires both the host and the device to support EPR. It is not guaranteed by TB5 alone. Thunderbolt 5 continues to tunnel DisplayPort video plus PCI Express data, so monitors still appear as DisplayPort devices to the OS. Use Intel certified TB5 cables to get 80 gigabits per second, and look for the the up to 120 gigabits per second bandwidth boost note if you're chasing the highest display modes. Composite Video CVBS. Composite means one wire carries everything. Brightness, luminance, color, chrominance, and sync are combined into a single analog signal. On consumer gear, it's the yellow RCA jack. Audio travels separately on red and white. It's standard definition only, typically 480 INTSC or 576 IPAL and SECAM, and shows artifacts like color bleed and dot crawl because color and detail share bandwidth. Useful today mainly for VCRS, retro consoles, and legacy capture. S-Video, Y, and C separates the picture into Y, luminance, brightness plus sync, and C, chrominance, color, sent over a 4-pin Mini-D-I-N plug. It is standard definition only, typically 480 I, N-T-S-C, or 576 I, P-A-L, and S-E-C-A-M. Because color and brightness ride on separate wires, it looks cleaner than composite, less color bleed and dot crawl, but it's still below the sharpness of component or RGB. No audio is carried on the S-Video plug. Use the red and white audio leads separately. Common on older camcorders, VCR and SVHS decks, early DVD players, and retro consoles. Component Video, YPBPR. Component here means the picture is split into three analog signals carried on three RCA jacks. Green equals Y, Luma plus Sync. Blue equals PB, Red equals PR. Because Luma and color are separated, it looks much cleaner than composite or S-Video. No audio rides on these three jacks. Use the separate red and white audio leads if needed. The link supports progressive and interlaced HD and, as an interface, can carry up to 1080p. In practice, many consumer sources limited analog HD outputs for DRM reasons, but the YPBPR format itself isn't the bottleneck. Today, it's largely replaced by HDMI. Converting to HDMI from YPBPR needs an active analog to digital converter. SCART, 21 pin analog AV connector used across Europe. It can carry composite video, in and out, RGB with composite sync, and sometimes S video. A few devices even support YPBPR component over SCART, but that's uncommon. Stereo audio is bi directional on the same plug. Two control pins auto switch TVs. Pin 8 sets aspect and status, approximately 0 to 2 volts off. Approximately 6 volts equals 16 to 9, are 12 volts equals 4 to 3, and pin 16 blanking selects RGB versus composite. Today it's largely obsolete, replaced by HDMI and Display Port. SDI Serial Digital Interface Broadcast and Pro Video over 75 ohm BNC coax. It carries uncompressed digital video, embedded multi channel audio, and ancillary data, closed captions, timecode, over long runs with locking connectors. SDI generations map to higher bit rates. SDSDI SMPTE 259 megabytes, 270 megabits per second. HDSDI 292 megabytes, 1.485 gigabits per second. 3G SDI 424 megabytes, 2.970 gigabits per second. 6G SDI 
GST 2081 5.94 gigabits per second 12 GSDI ST 2082 11.88 gigabits per second and a defined 24 GSDI family Typical copper runs approximately 100 meters for HDSDI, shorter as rates rise. Many 12 GSDI devices specify around up to 80 meters with qualified cable. 4K and 8K over SDI, 12 GSDI moves 4K 60 Hz on a single coax. Higher modes use multiple links, e.g. dual 12G for 8K 30 or quad link setups, or shift to fiber extenders for long distances. Embedded audio and ANC. SDI can embed up to 16 channels of digital audio and carry ANC data such as timecode and captions extracted or inserted by pro converters and routers. Why pros pick SDI compared to HDMI, SDI's locking BNC, long-run stability, and lack of consumer HDCP handshakes make it reliable for live-slash-broadcast workflows. HDMI remains common on consumer gear and short runs. I made an awesome video about every monitor panel, so don't forget to watch it later, okay?